Hello, this is Cherry Hart 3, the Word of God and the Prophetic. The year 2022 is here, and the countdown is about to happen. The shooting, the double barrel, the AK-47. People have to go in secluded areas because the bullets go up and the bullets come down. There's been people injured and killed in the past because of a bullet. You know, I visited a church I used to belong to like some time ago. I still love the people, but the people that you met um, at the time, they were humble. But I haven't seen them in a while. And it's like when I came to see it was like, oh, I have the keys to the church now, or I'm sitting in the pulpit. And then, because I, I, I spoke to someone, and they were like, uppity, like, like, you're talking to me? Like, I'm above. Look, the spirit that God, the, the gift that God gives us is the self-same spirit. No one's better than the other. We are dust from the earth. God trusts us enough to use us. And I'm listening to, um, with this spirit, you can feel that spirit in the atmosphere. And then, you know, I try to concentrate. I came to worship God. Um, and then people get up and they, they say the year 2022, oh, God's going to, it's just going to be prosperity or the blessings is coming. Why do we always look for blessings from God if you don't give anything? The whole thing of God using us is to bring people in because he loved us. He died for us and we're supposed to carry off um, that gift that he gave us for his purpose. You know, the word liberty means this. Uh, the state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority. When a person, a leader is in control and have the authority, the people become as that same spirit and then it's in the atmosphere. There was, there's arrogance, there's pride. In 2 Corinthians, the word says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So where the spirit of the Lord is, is the state of being free within society from oppressive restrictions imposed by authority. Obey God. The gifts he gave us is the self-same spirit. Operating in different areas. It does not make you better. We keep hoping to see, yes, there, there is hope. We always hope for the best. But every year is not promised to be a good year. But that's all you hear. God, the blessing is coming for 2022. No, God told me he was cleaning up the cities. Plural. Meaning more deaths. When a tree, there's a story that Jesus told in the Bible. And they came by this tree and the tree didn't grow. It was still there. It wasn't bearing any fruit. So one of the persons says, let's just cut it down. It's in a way. And this is like relating to us. This person's supposed to be a worker. Uh, it got saved and everything and doing nothing. You're not bearing any fruits. Cut it down. That's what the Bible says. So you no. Know, don't cut it down. Um, this, uh, what, what, what is, he says, why stand around and, and letting it sit? And then the other person says, comory, like, you know, kind of uh, agitated in the ground to, uh, uh, to make it grow. You know, let's wait another year. And if it grows, then that's fine. If not, then cut it down. So that's almost like God saying this. I'm going to give you the opportunity to get your life right. Bear fruit. I can't use you if you're doing nothing. 
So I'm going to keep giving you a year. I'm going to send the word to someone to tell another, you know, uh, do this, do that. You know, the Lord said this and that. Or, and God would also talk to you. But if you don't make any moves and then uh, not bearing that fruit, then cut it down. God can't use you. He'll move to the next person or the person that, it, you know, and he'll work with that person. This is not about pride and arrogance and you're better because you're sitting in a pulpit and sitting in the front seat. That does not make you to have authority over, over people. You used to be that sweet person. But now it's like, I've got something. No, you have nothing of, of, according to you. But you know, the gift that God gave you, he trusts you enough for you to use it and help his people. But we're going to be family. We should feel, be in a family atmosphere. I should, I should feel free to worship. But I felt a lot of things going on, and I couldn't mingle with it. And I was just a Lord, do they know? We have to take time to fast. And the, um, the, the leaders asked Jesus, why don't your disciples fast? He says, as long as they're with me, they don't need to fast because I am that. Um, before Jesus ordained the disciples, he showed them. He did miracles before them. It says he took them up to the mountain after that, after he chose them. After he showed them everything, he ordained them as a, um, they, they were disciples. And then it says they became apostles. <sighs> Look for the promise of God. God will tell his people what's coming next. It's not all about prosperity and we're going to bring this year in with this, this, and this. And I'm, I'm speaking of the church because, you know, the people of the world is looking for something. Um, that's why they said, oh, ch church is not like it used to be and they don't want to be a part of any church because the, the church has mingled in with the world. They don't want to say that you're supposed to be different. You're supposed to be set apart. So if you know that they're looking for something, why are you trying to make them comfortable like they're gonna be, they're gonna be the what who they are. But they look up for spiritual guidance. They expect you to be that spiritual guidance. But if you're with them, they don't want to, you know. Because it was one time when I was coming up, even um, I wouldn't want certain people to lay their hands on me because I don't want that spirit hovering around me, hovering around me. Because if you in the atmosphere with somebody, you have a certain type of spirit, arrogant spirit, or, or whatever. That person becomes that. If you have a joking spirit, that person becomes that. God is raising up an army. God will tell his people what's going to be expected. We're in a war. We're in a war. I was just sad, and um, it, it, it's kind of um, hurting to see people not um, escalating in the word. They're about to do some shooting now, AK, like I said, AK 47s and double barrels and things like that. And we have to go in the seclusion. They start now, and it sounds like thunder out there. This is really dangerous. And um, I just wish that um, people obey God, the saints of God. It's just going to be a handful of people. He's going to make it. As the angel Gabriel said, now when he spoke this, that means it, it is coming to pass. He said, I, I am Gabriel. I stand before God when he told Zacharias. At the time, he was telling him good tidings, but I don't lie. He said 80% of the evangelical church is going to be left behind. Only 20% 20 20 is going to make it. 20%. That's not a lot. That's almost, 80% is almost 100. Oh, God, how did, God ain't going to do that. God, and then, well, he wiped out the whole world. There are only eight people. But he said only 20% is going to make it in because 
you have to be set apart. You have to do what thus said the Lord. It's just too many people. Uh, ex um, it's one thing you expose someone, but uh, a lot of people are talking about each other and making jokes and uh, hurting people's feelings. And, you know, people get on the Internet. They're looking for a promise. They're looking for hope. They, they don't need to hear another saint talking about another one fist fighting and fornication in the church and shooting one another, dying in the church. We had one in our city. Um, often, well, I'm going to say often, but it, it happened more than once. Right there, one, one person got into argument over the scriptures. Like, you think you know everything, and this is not how it's how it said, whatever. And he shot him dead, shot the pastor dead. And he said he was the deacon. But was he living that righteous life, though? We can say what we are as titles, but that don't mean that's what we are. This is a war that we're in. It's time, even for 2022, to stop looking for uh, blessings to just go our way. What do you do, have to offer God? You know, we always go to church. Well, I'm going to church to get a touch from God. Every time, raise your hands. You know, God will come in and fill you. Why do you always expect him to touch you as a blessing and you don't, you can't even raise it. You go to, you raise your hands in order to receive something from God so you can feel a touch. This is not what it's all about, though. You bring the other person in. God will make you strong. It's about getting that relationship with God, doing the work that Jesus said he left for us. And they're shooting already. It's not even 12. <sighs> All right, so I'm going to get off. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I just pray a protection over my home that no bullets go through my living room with someone's arrogance. All right. Bye-bye. So sad. When will they learn? The church people. You would think they would be more advanced in Christ. But it's a spirit of arrogance.